I'm glad you're with us. I know you're going to be focusing a lot on the currency market. The U.S. dollar, which is obviously key to our markets in many ways. But what's your big picture here? What's your takeaway? The Nasdaq's up for the fourth day. Uh, markets are erasing yesterday's losses. We still have some volatility. What's your outlook here? Well, thanks for having me on, and it's great to see you as well. So markets are obviously rallying in terms of equity markets, and the dollar has backed off that key resistance level at 100, so it's, it's weakening the dollar index. And um, that has to do with the market shifting from all of the announcements of what's happening across the United States to when things could possibly begin to reopen and how that could happen. And so we know that that's a tenuous, but it eventually will happen. And so the market is looking to the future now. And I think that that's why we see uh, the rise in equities. We have VIX backing off from those very high levels. It had spiked to 82 in mid-March and was still in the 40s last week. Now we're sub 40 on the VIX. So that's really lended support to U.S. equities to start to rally and the dollar to back off. So G10 currency pairs right now are really being driven by one side of the equation, which is the U.S. dollar. Um, but that's not to say that there isn't risk out there. We all know that there is um, a lot of risk coming in terms of really bad economic numbers uh, for the second quarter. Right. So um, what, do, what do you think is like uh, the best case scenario or a likely scenario? Um, you obviously know what you're talking about here when we look at these things and how they relate to the dollar. What scenarios do you see here? I think that I don't want to say the dollar is running away to the downside right now, but I think things are a little bit too optimistic, perhaps both in equities and the dollar, say over a, a three month, two or three month horizon. And so I do think we'll see that big spike back up and equities uh, lower in the weeks ahead. Um, G10 pairs are approaching um, key resistance levels, meaning say Aussie is trading, you know, 6420 right now, 65 is the key top side resistance as of 66. So when it gets up to those figures, um, those resistance levels, I would like to see it come down. Um, the pound uh, is rallying against the dollar as well. Um, you know, 128 to the top side is a big resistance level for the pound. So things are starting to get pretty toppy, I think, in G10 currencies. We're moving towards resistance, which tells me that those are areas where we could sell and see the dollar stronger once again, and perhaps U.S. equities lower when, say, the very bad news starts to come. And, and we all know that weekly jobless claims are going to be high, and certainly the April payroll number, which is released the first week of May, is going to be a particularly devastating number that could, you know, um, it negatively impact the U.S. equity market and spike the VIX. Yeah, so you're watching currencies, the Aussie, the do the pound, uh, the yen, obviously, yeah. is always a great indicator, too. Um, so right. as you're looking at this, you see the dollar under 100 level, which you which you just mentioned. Um, when we look right. at, you know, the U.S. dollar and the, against the basket of the other indices, um, when you what numbers are you really looking at? Because you talk about resistance. Uh, I want folks to be able to take action away from what you're saying, because you're the pro on this. So um, whether it's the VIX or it's that dollar um, index that you were just looking at, you know, the DXY or something, what numbers do you really look at that makes make you say, hey, you know what, let me stop and think about this? I think when you're setting up your currency trading day, the first thing you need to look at when you wake up in the morning is how the futures are trading and how Asian and European markets did overnight. So that's kind of in terms of equity. So that's terms of follow on price action. If we have a bad Asia session, a negative, you know, European session, U.S. futures are likely to be negative depending on what news comes overnight. So that's how you want to set up your trading day. G10 currency pairs are really taking their cue right now off of how the U.S. equity market is trading, either risk on or risk off. And right now we see ourselves in a period of risk on trading. So you want to be aware of how equities are trading for the day, how the futures open, and where the VIX is, the, the measure of volatility um, of the S&P 500. Right. And if we're at 38 right now, if that's rising back to a 50 level, you know, that's going to see the U.S. dollar strengthen because the U.S. dollar, as you mentioned, is a safe haven currency. And when volatility rises in the markets, that's when the dollar typically strengthens. So those are the things I would look at to set up my 
mornings in trading and I would shorten my currency trading horizons almost to, you know, a one to three day horizon. Yeah, that's good. That's actually good advice, too, to be careful because there are these swings. And, you know, we watch the dollar relationship with commodities and gold, for example, is at the highest yeah. level since 2012. But oils at, you know, twenty dollars and 80 cents, something like that. So um, just a quick thought on that relationship between the dollar and and some commodities. Right. It's just difficult right now for especially oil because there's no global production, global demand um, globally, especially in the G10 countries all of their economies are slowing, we'll all be in, in global recession. You know, the IMF has said we're gonna be in a global recession about 3% uh, for this year, but certainly G10 economies are being hit disproportionately harder. Um, and so without that global, they're not needing so much oil for the global production because there's less demand. In terms of gold, I kind of think of gold as, is a safe haven, and I think of it as a safe haven of last resort. And so in terms of, Dollar is a safe haven, yen is a safe haven, but when things are really, really going wrong and the outlook is so uncertain in terms of will we have a V-shaped recovery or an L-shaped recovery, or we don't even know exactly when G10 economies are going to get back online in terms of the rolling openings for different sectors in the economies. And so really, it's no surprise to me that gold yeah. is holding up obviously very well because it's just too much uncertainty.